here's uh, John Paul Bichard again, um, standing in front of a very extraordinary device that uh, another gentleman who works here has made. Yeah, Yoshi. Is this is one of Yoshi Akai's pieces. Essentially, it's like it's, you're, you're essentially kind of a DJ scratching Kanika bread. So you're kind of being backwards and forwards with the and kind a of hard dishes. Swedish bread and a number yeah. of other odd looking things yeah. here. It's wonderful um, kind of gloves and so Lego synthesizer. Amazing. Now, now that we have established that this is a place where the weird is normal, <laughs> uh, you can come around and tell us exactly what really goes on here. Well, essentially, the institute's been going for about 10 years, and it was set up by the Swedish government as a kind of public-private um, institution. Um, and it's essentially a little bit like a kind of Swedish version of MIT. So what you have is a group of... Like the media lab at MIT. Yeah, this is, yeah. like the media lab at MIT. Um, so essentially what the, the, the bottom ideas of the Institute are that one is about exploring technology as a social tool or as a material and the other thing is how do you kind of bring together collaborations between say designers, artists, architects, engineers, technologists and really start to kind of think about these ideas about you know what technology can be instead of what it is as a function. So typically in the Institute we have different studios, uh, we have a sound studio up in northern Sweden uh, we have a game studio over in Gothenburg. Um, here we have a number of quite important studios. One is Mobile Life, which is looking at a, at, on a 10-year uh, research project into what's the nature of mobile um, like living, in a way, mobile technologies. And so there we're looking at technology as like an emotional tool. You know, how do you kind of get um, technology to work with you, not just as an application to, say, look at photographs or you know, do something in a functional way, but look at it more as like, how does it come, you know, how, does, how do mobile devices come into your life um, on an emotional or um, an intimate level? I mean, if you think about it, a mobile phone is one of the few devices that you actually kind of hold to your face. I mean, it's a very intimate device. And how do these kind of, these technologies impact our lives now? Um, we have another studio, the, um, the Power um, the Energy Research uh, Unit. Uh, they're looking at how do you look at... Um, essentially getting people to think about energy consumption. So in a domestic environment, you know, it's not trying to tell people to stop using the energy. It's trying to kind of say to them, you know, be aware of the energy you're using and how you're, you're consuming it. And with, this is being done in a very kind of aesthetic way. So, for instance, there's an award-winning lamp where um, the, the better con consumer you are, the lamp kind of opens up like a flower. And if you're really kind of a bad consumer, then it kind of closes down. So it's kind of reminding you, you know, that, that try to be a, a kind of thoughtful consumer rather than just keep on kind of churning in the kind of like the power and the, the goods. And so the lamp is a, also an aesthetic thing. It's, it's a very, it's, it's a pretty it, it thing. It was yeah. designed by Front, who are like a, a very, very well-known like Swedish design agency. So we collaborate, you know, internally and externally with the kind of best people we can yeah, so, I mean, yeah. Yeah, here, this is the art and technology unit. So we have uh, performing pictures who look at really new ways of looking at, say, narrative through the moving image and through essentially kind of, you know, technology-enhanced film. Uh, we have Art and Technology Unit and Artists in Residence where people are invited in from around the world to spend time, you know, constructing new ideas. Um, uh, Yoshi Akai, the, yeah. sound, uh, the sound artist, is, yeah. is he such, such an artist? Yeah, he's residence? a kind of long-term resident, mm -hmm. yeah. He's, uh, and we, myself and my colleague Magnus Johnson, I mean, we're creative advisors, so... We sit more on the kind of representing the institute in terms of more commercial projects, but that's not to say that we're kind of you know only work commercially. What we're doing is we're looking at say um, strategic um, developments. So we worked here with the city of Shista in identifying you know new sites, new new formats, and new strategies for how you take digital culture into the everyday, into kind of public life. Um, also, we work with typically you know architects, with um, property investors, and with you know public bodies. To try to see, you know, how can you start to use technology in, say, for instance, building or public space? Well, that sort of raises the question. There's a book put out already quite a few years ago when things begin to think mm -hmm. uh, about uh, the embedding of intelligence into, into a lot of gadgets mm -hmm. and things. That, uh, are we heading for uh, uh, a time in which things will start to communicate to us in an artistic way, in a spontaneous way? Oh, most so, definitely. I mean, one of the projects we've got um, coming up actually, actually in Tallinn, there's the old Communist Party headquarters there have now been turned into a large kind of entertainment um, and kind of shopping and cultural centre. And what we're doing there is we're trying to give the whole building more of a kind of purpose or we're actually trying to give the building a memory. 
and so we'll have a unit in there where you have you go up to a little unit uh, just in the middle of the kind of shopping you know, centre, um, a little touch screen and some lights around it. You touch it and you take a little three second video of yourself and maybe it's a daydream or a dream or something you thought about but then what happens is that the when you choose a three seconds that you like it's almost a little bit like kind of YouTube but taken with a really big twist um, that, that picture is in turn or that three seconds clip is turned into 30 seconds so you then turn into slow motion portrait and those are then posted around the building on kind of on screens and also on a very big screen outside the building so in some way, the build, it's, it's almost like the building is, is taking this slow motion memory of the people that have been inside it. And, and also the people themselves will see themselves coming up in this very, very slow... It's a beautiful thing, actually, because it's, like, it's like with our delay mirror. <coughs> it, it, it's about taking someone in their ordinary, everyday kind of you know, banality, in a way, and turning it into something really quite profound. So if I look around, I can look around at you now, like one second. If you turn that into one minute you suddenly have this beautiful, like, this gaze suddenly, like, mm. attaches to All right, or someone, say, someone thinks to themselves, what, what am I doing in front of this machine, and yeah. breaks into a smile, yeah. then that can be Slow smile. a small yeah. smile, and that can be put up on, on outside the building on a big screen. Go, and, essentially, and, these and, things yeah, will run yeah. concurrently, yeah. So all the time yeah. you've got these yeah. kind of slow-motion video portraits happening. In Tallinn right now. This, is, yeah. this, this will be, we're, we're actually this is what, working this on. This is what's being put up, so... Yeah. So the, the people who, who follow my video blog in, in Riga, Latvia, and who travel to Estonia can sort of look forward to this. This, this will be d developing through the summer and autumn, and the centre will be opening in October, late October. So. Late October, so yeah. something to go to Tallinn in yeah. the fall for. So. But it's typical of the things yeah. we do here. You know, it's yeah. trying to, in a way, it's trying to introduce a story, and it's trying to give a twist and be a little bit provocative. You know, so people, uh, it's funny because with Delay Mirror, with a lot of things that we've done, is people, there's a little bit of, not disturbance, but you know, people feel a little bit like, it's a little bit uncanny. And then once yeah. they get over that uncanniness, it's a very, an interesting kind of engaging experience.